We are having a conversation with uh, Rajeshwari Nair. She's in charge of some administrative uh, work at uh, CMI as well as uh, on the library matters. So tell us something about the kind of administrative stuff you're involved in. So I look after the administrative part of the teaching program. Mm -hmm. uh, what exactly does CMI. that entail? Uh, so it starts from, of course, admissions process. Uh -huh. so and that's the that's season in uh, June, July? From March. Oh, March. Yeah, okay. because uh -huh. applications open sometime in All right. March. Right. So we start working at that is myself, Madhavan and uh -huh. Manoj. Yes. Uh, that's the current team. Uh -huh. So we start working on it right from February. Okay. Because the application forms are available online. So one okay. has to verify that things work. And things okay. Like that. So the testing starts in... Uh, but testing does not happen online. You have to actually go to a center and take uh, the test. No, no, no. Online testing of application forms. Oh, testing. Okay. Forms. okay. Yeah. Okay. So that needs some amount of testing before it's ah, okay. uh, displayed to the world. Okay. So we do that. Uh -huh. Afterwards, uh, there are few application forms which are demanded by post. Otherwise, everything okay. is online. Online. Uh -huh. And also, our own students, CMI students who are graduating from uh, BSc or MSc, okay. they would like to apply to in other CMI, places. Continue uh -huh. studying yeah. at CMI. Yeah. So again, that work also we handle. Okay. And uh, that process goes through. July. This is yes. So that is the very small part. Okay. And once the results are announced, uh -huh. then the entrance examination itself. Uh, okay. We have about twenty-two centers. Okay. Uh, all over India. Okay. So one has to send uh, exam material to all these places. Uh -huh. So where exactly are they administered? Are there other universities or some specific location? Schools and universities. Schools. Okay. Yeah, some in in big cities. Big or cities and also small cities like in the northeast. We have uh, ah, okay. Shillong, okay. Imphal, Imphal was added. How do you city. choose uh, where the center should be? I mean, so some requests also come from students. I see. Uh, some candidates who are aspiring to join CMI. Okay, so, so they, they will send us requests. I see. So, and we also see the data of uh, uh -huh. the uh -huh. applicants. Applicants. Yeah. And then we feel that okay, we should have a center oh, in this okay. place, and then we try to find somebody who will. Take up this responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At, actually, at our university, we have uh, uh, exam for the Society of Actuaries. Uh -huh. So I have to do that administering that. that okay. Part. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so here. Right. It's just not me. Mm -hmm. uh, I am part of a team. Sure. Yeah. There yeah. is Shri Pati and Vijayalakshmi who can help me in this okay. work. And Madhavan, of course, handles all the top level dealings. Right. Fixing up the school or right. college or institute. Okay. Stuff like that. And then we take up all of the work. Okay. So this happens in early May. Uh -huh. uh, then the exam is due generally mid May. Uh -huh. So before that, we have to ensure that all the exam material reaches the centers. Okay. And uh, the other part of your job is, of course, has to do with the library. Uh, yes. So tell us something about the library. How does uh, how does the library work? I understand that. It's open all the time, or all yes, the time. Yes, it is twenty-four hours. It's open twenty-four hours, uh -huh. uh, all seven days of the week throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is closed in the morning for about one and a half hours for cleaning. Okay. Yeah. So strictly at that time. So other than that, anybody can walk in. And anybody can walk in. Uh -huh. We have, of course, some rules put in so that uh, we ensure that uh, books are not lost because book loss was a big issue. Oh, it was for, for a very long time. I see. So you would have noticed that we have now put in the RFID system yeah. and gates and so on. Yeah. So it's our journey of our library is very interesting. Uh -huh. So we were in a Tinagar office in uh -huh. the city. Yes. And we had a small room. Yeah. Uh, probably one tenth of the size of the current library. Yes. That's a small room. Yes. <laughs> uh, we had about two thousand five hundred books at uh -huh. that point of time. Yeah. And some back issues of journals Just. which were. Largely gifted to us because we didn't have money to buy, buy anything. Yeah. Yeah. Even the books we used to buy very, very carefully because of lack of right. funds. Right. In, even today, we, even though we have funds, we buy our books very carefully. Right. So our collection is excellent. Uh -huh. Whoever comes here, uh, any visitor who comes here has told us that our library is very good. How, how do you decide on which books to buy them? So it is... Uh, there are three methods. Mm -hmm. One is uh, any student or faculty member can suggest a book. 
Okay. Yeah, we just order it. Yeah. I just order it. In yeah. fact, it doesn't go through any further bureaucratic hassles. Okay. So we do How long does it take to for the book to come, so especially it, from abroad? Yeah, know? it takes about two months. It about two months. Yeah. You buy through Amazon? Or uh, no, or? we don't do that. We buy through book dealers who are in India. Okay. So they are representatives yes. in India, yes, wherever it is. Yes, and we also have bargained a very good discount from them. I see. I see. So it helps us a lot. Yes. In yeah. saving money right. for more books. Right. How about journals? Journals also, we have uh, about thirty-eight journals. We do have hard copies. Physically. Mm -hmm. Physical copy. And how about uh, JSTOR? Uh -huh. And about uh, JSTOR, some collection, mathematics and statistics. Okay. But are they available through? If I log in through the network of CMI, yes, it is available. It is available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not available from outside. Not available from outside because it's uh, attached to an IP number. Okay. Yeah. So, so if I if I uh, connect through the thing, I haven't actually tried that one. Huh. But, but how about uh, journals, uh, internet journals? You know, online journals. Yeah, we have. Uh, Online journals also. Uh -huh. So then again, they also go through the IP. Yes, okay. because it's subscribed. So what kind of journals do you subscribe to? I mean, so there obviously are, uh, maths, stats. Yeah, really. mostly mathematics. Okay. And uh, some physics journals also. Okay. Computer science, there is hardly anything because I think for them most of the material is available from other sources. Okay. Like the author, if they write the author, they, they will send the paper. <laughs> Yeah, I do that a lot, you know, our, our, our university library has very restricted access for, you know, for certain subjects, mm -hmm. but I work on interdisciplinary thing where I have to look for, <laughs> from geophysical journal, for example, we have no subscription for that, so I usually write to the authors and usually they, they send it, yeah, either they send it uh, electronically, you know, the, the e-copy. Yeah, mostly they just yeah. send a PDF yeah. copy, yeah. yeah. And we also have interlibrary loan. Okay. Uh, so I asked Do you have to go through some other central mechanism in India to get the... Uh, no, no, I no. just write directly to the librarian. Okay. Uh, let's say the IMSC, Institute of Mathematical uh -huh. Sciences. Uh -huh. or some of these ICERs which are right. newly set up. Right. So they all subscribe to vast... I see. Uh, journals. Of journals yes. Okay. So anything and everything I ask them. Okay. They will send me a PDF copy. And... Soon, usually. The so, yes, there is no delay. Okay. So okay. All, I find this uh, the current system. Uh -huh. India has changed a lot. Yes. So there are younger people working in. I am not very young, but <laughs> a lot of younger people working in these new institutes uh -huh. have been set up. Uh -huh. They are very friendly and very cooperative. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. It's, um, I mean, you know, you know, generally the trend in uh, terms of libraries. I mean. I haven't gone to our university library, you know, physically gone there probably last two years. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really read books as such um, and journals and stuff I can get access from my office. So I really need to physically don't need to go there. Uh, do you find that sort of thing or the students come here anyway for peace and quiet? During or? the day, I don't see many people in the library. Mm -hmm. So how... How and why we keep the library open 24 uh -huh. hours. Yeah. So that brings us to this topic. So earlier our library used to close, I think, at 5 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I don't remember now. Yeah. It's been a long time. So students used to ask us that we should keep the library open. Uh, at for later time. hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have a mechanism in place to ensure that the books are safe. Even yeah. during the daytime, it is not. it was not manned and it is still not manned. There is only mm. a security. Okay. So at that point we started losing a lot of books. Uh -huh. so then we decided that uh, it's best to go for an electronic system where <coughs> check-in, check-outs are, yeah. are fit in place and automatic yeah. and then there, there are gates which beep and things like that. Okay. So for that it took us, we implemented that. Uh -huh. uh, it took us uh, a lot of time, about two so years. How, how many books do you have now? We have about 9,400 books right now. When we moved here, we had uh, about 2,500 books. Uh -huh. That was in 2005. Okay. And then we had about 3,700 books uh, when we started. Mm -hmm. We moved into mm -hmm. RFID system. Mm -hmm. so, and we are the 
I think we are the first institute which implemented open source. We we use open source uh, software called Koha. Okay. So we are the first ones. Most likely, we are the first one who uh-huh. used Koha with RFID, an open source software integrated with RFID system. I see. Oh, so how does it work? If if I go and you know blip through the machine, then it will automatically register to my. Oh, we have a kiosk. It's like an ATM. Uh huh. We can uh-huh. see. So I have to go with my ID and. You have a card, yeah, uh-huh. card, which is which has a RFID chip inside. Okay. And then you have to use that uh, for borrowing books. So you keep the keep your card. Okay. And the book together on the kiosk. Okay, and, and then, then you automatically. Yeah, okay. automatically you get a email that you have checked ah, out these books. Okay, and and how long is the default time for that till the end so of semester? Students, MSc and uh, undergraduate students have uh, four weeks. Okay. It's only because mostly they borrow textbooks. I see. And we yeah. don't want them one person to go to on hold the, on to the hold on to the book. Yeah. But for faculty members, it is like three hundred days. Okay. So How do you come up with three hundred days? Onwards, it is How do you come up with three hundred days? Usually, it's one semester. <laughs> Here, uh, people felt that it's okay to give uh, more time. Hmm. So right now, it's working fine. Hmm. If there is a demand to bring it down. Okay. Yes, we will bring it down. Um, and 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 the checkout system works like uh, you know if somebody else. Ask for the same book, then uh, I can do that. And ah, so how long do I have to? Uh-huh. There is a reservation. So yeah. Any checked out book can be put on hold. Okay. So uh, as soon as the time expires, then I have to bring it back. Uh, yes. Otherwise, uh, that so MSc and uh, UG and BSc and MSc students have fine. So okay. every day they delay the book two rupee fine is applicable, okay. but not for others. For okay. Such color onwards, there is no. Fine okay. But then we just trust them to return the books when it is due. Yeah. And emails are automatically emails are sent when the book is about to be due and when it is due and two days after it is due. Yeah, I remember many years ago, um, as in University of Wisconsin, they didn't have any fines for the faculty members. Mm-hmm. So you went and you know asked them, okay, what books do I owe? And they will tell you, okay, these are the books. And uh, so I thought I returned all the books, uh-huh. and then I was moving to Singapore. <laughs> After I arrived in Singapore, I realized I did not return one particular book. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that stayed with me. And then from there, I went to Australia. It stayed with me. And then, then I came back to Mexico. It stayed with me, and I returned that book after twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. <laughs> Nothing like that happens here. <laughs> so we do have a, a library login. Every member has a library account. Okay. So one can log into their account and check, check what books much. they have, what is the status. But does it send you a reminder? Of, you know, if I don't return a book, that yes, it does. Send it does. Reminder. An automatic reminder. An automatic reminder. Okay. That those facilities are there. And once you place a book on hold, uh-huh. as soon as it's available. Yeah. You'll get an email saying that the book is available, okay. but the hold will get cancelled after 24 hours. At 24 you, hours, yeah, okay. the user decides that I'll take it one week later. Then we are depriving other users of sure. issuing that. Mm-hmm. So after 24 hours, the reservation gets cancelled after that. Okay. Thank you.